Hey, hello. Yeah. Hello. We don't got a theme song. <laughs> we do. We should have made a theme song. Why? How would how would you have to do that now? Exactly. I don't know. Just make one right now. Okay. <laughs> Begin. What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the panel for the guitar as a symbol. I'm Ian Fowles. I will be your host. I play in a band called the Aquabats. Um, and guitar.com asked me to put this uh, little thing together. So here we are. We're all excited to be here. Let me introduce you. We could be a band, actually. To our panelists first. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'll yeah, play drums. So go ahead. We'll go here right I'll next to you. I'll play French horn. Get, right. get that. Done. Cool. Hi. I'm, am I introduce myself? A band of guitar players that don't play guitar. Everyone's um, a lead guitar. We have Warren Fitzgerald from the Hi. Vandals right here. Uh, ne sitting next to me, uh, I refuse he's also, to introduce myself. <laughs> he's also played in many other bands, um, like so uh, Gwen Stefani, Tenacious D, Oingo Boingo, to name a few. And um, uh, open mic night, yeah. We worked cool. together a lot on uh, Aquabats TV show we had a few yes. years ago. Um, well, joining us also is Chris Trainer from the band Bush, also played in Rival School. Ow! Orange Nine Millimeter, Helmet, Helmet, lots of great bands. Go straight to Helmet. Yeah. And then we have Susie Medley from Dead Sarah joining us as well. The so, only band I've ever been in. Hey, that's like Frank Black. He's only. I like it. I like it. I'm not complaining. It's called monogamy. It's okay. <laughs> so these are our <laughs> panelists. Okay. We're going to have a lively discussion about thinking about the guitar in ways maybe you've never considered before. You know when he says, pick up that guitar and talk to me, we're actually going to do the opposite. We're, we're, we're already quoting, talk about the guitar. quoting Poison. It's not even two minutes in, we're Is quoting that Poison. I believe so. Uh, Don't give us the Babe in the Woods routine. You know that's Poison. <laughs> I thought it was a uh, 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 soft machine. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Or some prog rock thing. I thought they were being ironic. So um, you might wonder, guitar is a symbol. What does that mean? I'm just going to talk really quick about symbols. Represent. And then we'll we'll, we'll move around to the, everyone else and talk a little bit. Symbols are kind of an ancient language. That it's a, kind of a lost language today. Symbols are all around us. And what it really is is something, a, a picture, an icon, a letter. Things, we're at the park. Right, things that um, represent something more than just the image itself, right? So you uh, you see a stop sign. It's not just a sign. It's giving you an instruction to stop. So that's a very basic uh, symbol. That's an icon. Or an icon. actually, that would be an uh, index, I think. It would be, be a sign and a symbol, I guess. Sign and symbol, yeah, exactly. It's um, arbitrary, though. Yeah. But symbols have been used um, over centuries by religions, by secret societies, by Joseph um, Campbell, all kinds of yeah mythologists and um, you know they they were a way to communicate deeper truths. So um, you could communicate a lot in a symbol. Symbols can be multi layered. There's numerous lessons that can be learned and pulled from them. They're also used to conceal. So they're used, used to reveal truth. They're also used to conceal truth. If you don't know anything about the symbol then uh, you can communicate with others of your group secretly. Yeah. The, um, right. The ancient, I just learned this, the ancient um, paper makers in France used to, their watermarks, they were actually communicating symbols to other guild members as they made their paper and distributed it around Europe. So traditions. Same, those, with, yeah. uh, same with Freemasonry, right? They have trademarks, tr cr you know, craft trade, symbols that only those in the group understand so gluten-free masonry <laughs> <laughs> vegan free masonry those are good too that's a, yeah. that's a 21st century branch right i'm a gluten-free mason um but uh what else symbols um it's, so, it's 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 language for illiterates kind of on some level too right like it's, it's like romper and, river. and language before actual verbal communication Right, right. So you go into like an ancient cathedral or something. Hieroglyphics. There's, there's not words. Um, there's stained glass with pictures and symbols to teach the, the unlearned it's masses. Sunday comics. Right. 
Yeah, it's like Ziggy. Sunday comics. <laughs> right. Our- the family circus. <laughs> and they, um, well, one thing about symbols why they're used a lot is because they're universal. A lot of times they transcend language, they transcend place and time. You know, um, for example, like using an animal as a symbol, like, uh, you know, like a, a jaguar or a tiger is a symbol of power, or ferocity, um, so stuff like right. that. Everyone has seen and knows around the world certain symbols certain uh like a like a bee you know the honeybee is they're workers they work together so the beehive is a symbol of industry and they're noble right so they, everyone, they're furries you can use symbols across different cultures and across different times and, and so that they can be used by all people around the world it's um, like charades like uh, of of uh, archaic charades archaic charades yeah. yes and like susie said hieroglyphics that's Get super thing. hieroglyphics, yeah. And even <laughs> even language today, our our written language, emojis, originally like was the movie, symbols, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's they, what emo kids invent. They also teach abstract concepts. So something that's harder to describe in words, you can look at a picture or a symbol. Dyslexics, all for the dyslexic. All from it. Dyslexics right. an abstract concept. I think, yeah. or are you referencing what you're saying for dyslexic people? Okay. For dyslexics, it's easier dyslexic. to learn visually than verbally or wordably. Except for lowercase b's and d's, those still piss yeah, me off. Yeah, I know. Joy. Amen. Like right that's the only can. one. So really quick, music, if you think about it, is invisible. You you can't see music. It's just literally vibrations. It's disturbance well, of the bounce. air. So everything around music is symbolic. You can't see music. You can only hear it. And that, it's like in radiation. That, in that regard, right. You, so you have um, album covers, music videos, you know, live performances and seeing bands play is, is all the visual stimulation. Stimula, it's the entire industry is basically the equivalent Stimuli. of a leaf blower. Yes. It is vibrations in the friggin' air landing on your eardrum. Even, it's an aesthetic clock. Right, even she. I like music. that one too. Yeah, it's 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 it does have the time factor. I like she yeah. music. Even itself is just a sign and a symbol. It's not actually music itself. It's written down. It's abstract, but I think it's an, a language that we don't even realize we understand and other people appreciate. I think that's the collective right. unconsciousness. Absolutely. Right, music as a second language, as a foreign language, absolutely. Jamming is like when a baby babbles. Like you're trying to find the words for what it is you're trying to say, and you're just you know, baby, bah, 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 like whatever. That's what or you're building the skeleton, and you haven't yeah, the scaf- like the sca- you, yeah, you haven't added like the tits and the ass and nice the pathways. Story. Yeah, I, like you haven't added the flesh and the meat yet. That uh, exactly. That's always last in my um, Frankenstein <laughs> and my linguistic Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah. So what we're gonna do today is try and explore how the guitar is a as a symbol. If you've never seen one, by the way. Maybe been overlooked as a symbol <laughs> by guitar players. So we've all got some guitars hanging hanging around here. Sometimes people uh, wow. put them in front of hotels, really big ones. Mm-hmm. Sometimes uh, right. there's a place called, I don't know how to say it, but it's got a bunch of them on the wall and they sell them. <laughs> yeah. I think it's I they're, everywhere. they're everywhere. Is that what it is? They're everywhere. Guitar well, center? Cri- Thank you. Right. We're going to start with Chris. Chris is going to take us way back and kind of uh, discuss some of the mythology that can be associated with guitar. And um, then we'll, we'll move along from there. So, Chris, I think you have a few ideas for us. In other words. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess for the, purpose of the uh, purposes of this conversation of looking at guitar and rock music, I'm, I'm a rock musician, so I, I look at guitar from the point of view of rock and music from the point of view of rock. So looking at um, guitar and rock music through mythology, I guess we should just, mythology is just the study of myth. And a myth is a story that um, is created to... Um, explain a uh, natural or social phenomenon. And like these presents. stories, what'd you say, buddy? Like how presents show up on Christmas. Like you, you got to explain it. Right. Totally. 
And um, they usually have, uh, these kind of stories usually have gods, demigods, or human beings with supernatural attributes or or Superpowers, features. yeah. Yeah. And this is pretty, although it's, you know, feels like, oh, what does this have to do with rock music? Actually, it's very familiar to us. Um, we, we refer to rock musicians often as rock gods. Um, we listen when we first hear, um, like, for instance, when I first heard Jimi Hendrix and Jimmy Page, I was like, how did they do this with the same instrument that I have? Like, Jimi Hendrix must have notes that I don't have on the guitar. So there's this kind of like coaxing sounds out. Yeah. Yeah. It's there's a there's a kind of mystery around it as a Zeppelin fan, you know, even to this day. Yeah. Listening to Jimmy Page's guitar playing there's like this in between stuff on the guitar that isn't notes and so they seem like um they're coming from a different place and that is true and and so also around led zeppelin like we know that they have their own symbols there's a mythology created around zeppelin they are um, pretty literal this, with the symbols yeah yeah um and so there's this whole lore around rock music it's part of the it's part of the thing when we get into a band especially in the era i think that we grew up in there wasn't this constant stream of information about bands so the sound there, cloud, yeah sorry so <laughs> there's there are these rumors about it you know they, there become these rumors about the bands some of them being true and some of them being totally made up and also perpetuated by the bands you know that that becomes a sort of power because um myth uh we need myth we need myth to explain these phenomena but also myth needs us to perpetuate itself it's kind of like a meme like the clapton is god meme that started getting kind of spray painted all over london in the 1960s the when, I, when i started playing guitar i think around the same time that maybe maybe uh warren you did it was during the neoclassical shred era so everybody was talking about virtuosity everyone was into ingve yes I, that wasn't really my thing, but I needed to play with people. So I started jamming with people that were, were into this kind of thing and jamming with heavy metal musicians. Dark and days. The dark days, yeah. Yes, um, Vir virtuosity signaling. Yeah, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, when I started jamming with these people, they uh, I kept hearing the name Paganini coming up and saying, like, uh, you know, I would sell my soul to the devil to be that good. And I didn't know anything about it. it and it piqued my interest to this kind of connection to, uh, you know, selling your soul to the devil or kind of like dark arts connected to these uh, superior, you know, otherworldly guitar skills. So even though this is about guitar, I just want to kind of dip into history and talk about Giuseppe Tartini, who's who was a violin player and a composer. And he, uh, his most famous piece of music is the Devil's Trill Symphony in G. And Madame Blavatsky wrote this story about Tartini, tells the story about Tartini that he was uh, in a dream and the devil came to him in his dream and he said, I can, I'll show you the most beautiful piece of music ever composed on the violin, if for your soul. And he said, okay. And in his dream, Tartini handed his violin to the devil and the devil tuned his violin, which we'll come back to the devil tuning people's instruments later. And joined him. Yeah. played him the most beautiful piece of music that he had ever heard. And he woke up right away and he did his best to transcribe it. And this became the, the Devil's Trill Sonata. Mm -hmm. But he said about it that um, what he wrote paled in comparison to what he heard in his dream. And he, he said something to the liking of... Um, he was so frustrated by how beautiful this was and how fantastic it was that if he could find another way to make uh, money and have enjoyment other than the violin, that he would have smashed his violin over his knee because what he had composed and played had was nothing in comparison to what the devil had played him in his dream. It's like quarantine. That's, yeah. yeah, that's... <laughs> and that's I so think that we can relate to this mm -hmm. because especially yeah. in today's modern age when you, you know, you're practicing guitar and you go on Instagram or you go on YouTube and you see these, you know, guitar players that are, you know, eight years old and like shredding paganini 
that it seems like a frustrating thing. Like there's this like frustration that goes along with the instrument. And sometimes you just want to give up. And those and, are real. I it. thought those were deep fakes. All of those that really, frustration. Really upset. No, I thought the kid's shredding. I thought that was a complete deep fake. I did they probably that. are. There's no way to tell anymore. So I also think, I also think it's interesting that you can have for me, for example, I'll, I'll try to learn like a Bush song or this song or whatever. And I just, I can't, I can't get it like you would. I can't mm -hmm. learn something that you created. Someone can't write or play Weatherman or some song like I do. And I think every instrument and every person kind of owns that like authenticity. That's the and voice. I think, yeah, I like yeah it's the voice. And I think that is really interesting that he couldn't um, convey that from his dream. Well, I think that's something that we, we all kind of share in. And the reason why I brought him up is is because Paganini was the person that most people mentioned. And Paganini mm -hmm. is most most um, famously known as being a guitar virtuoso. For Shredder, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, he was a violin virtuoso, but actually his first love was the guitar. He was said to have mastered mm -hmm. the guitar. And even though at, in his day he was the wealthiest and most famous solo uh, instrumentalist, he would never play guitar in concerts for people because mm. he loved the guitar so much that he wanted to keep that for himself oh sacred i can relate that's interesting so wow he um that's paganini was um so good so much better than anybody that was around at his time that people had um, attributed his great skills to some association with dark arts or darkness or some kind of deal with the devil. That's like technology. If, if you, if you can't, it's the equivalent of magic. If you don't know what's going on with it, like it's that uh, mm. uh, 2001 guy quote. Yeah. Is it Sagan or is it Asimov? Or? It's uh, uh, yeah, the, the guy that wrote the book to the uh, shit. Ian, uh, is it Ian, all English people are named Ian. <laughs> 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 no. Um, uh, yeah, but that idea that sophisticated enough technology is just understood as magic in the same way you could go like, you know, to uncontacted uh, people and be like, hey, I want to see, a, um, uh, want to watch me, um, whatever, Snapchat. They'd be like, you're a wizard. Obviously. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. You know. Yeah. Well, I think that we, we tend not to see um, in any player, nobody sees the amount of time that we're practicing. So even though I'm in a band that people may attribute to like, playing power chords and with a fuzz pedal like i spend most of my day practicing like most guitar players spend their time it's kind of sneaky practicing though. so we don't see that i'm a very sneaky person so it's, it, it, it's that you know if the shoe fits that's but, funny so to so they would say um there was all these rumors about paganini just to get back to him to, to loop it back into guitar uh people would make the sign of the cross when they saw him perform because they didn't want mm. evil spirits getting in him like a uh, dracula so, Wow. Somebody left uh, one of his concerts terrified because he had broken the strings on his violin and they s swore they saw the devil whispering in his ear for him to play flawless notes on broken strings. Wow. And so That's there was crazy. all these rumors around him. And interestingly, Paganini's mom, when he was five, had this dream with Tartini in it. She had a dream where... Paganini as a child was performing in a concert and the building went on fire and Tartini was there watching and there was a devil in the corner, a red devil with a guitar. And she asked this, there, an angel appeared to her in the dream and she said, will my son's name be, um, you know, immortal in the pan pantheon of great musicians? And the angel gave her some sort of sign that yes. And so in the back of his, in the back of his mind, Paganini knew that his mom had told him this story when he was five years old. So in the back of his mind, this whole time where people were attributing his skills to some sort of relationship to dark arts, he also in the back of his mind knew that, um, that there was a possibility of that, or at least his mother had told him that. And so this, this uh, concept in European folklore mm -hmm. about uh, a deal with the devil or a pact with the devil for some great skills Creative is quite effort, common. Yeah. It's super common in European folklore. And it actually does make its way in some somehow to the Mississippi Delta with Robert Johnson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's friggin' uh, uh, what's his name? Rumpelstiltskin. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. 
it's like, I can't do this thing. Um, can you got a life hack for me? I'll give you my soul or something like that. Or yeah. uh, Dorian Gray or whatever. Like, it can I be a little more better looking for a long time? Yeah, <laughs> Rumpelstiltskin is a great dog's name, by the way. Um, Rumpel, is. Rumpel, Rumpel, oh, wag your tail skins or something. It seems like there's something else in there. Wag Rumpel tail skin. Rumpel so, tail wag. But we're assuming everyone knows the, the uh, Robert Johnson story. Maybe some viewers don't. For uh, sure. Yeah, I'll just loop it. Should I do a quick like recap? Yeah, that, or? Yeah, yeah. I went down to the crossroads. Right. So um, Robert Johnson's iconic Delta blues player. Um, he also, when people, when the Rolling Stones lived, got together, they lived in an apartment in London. And Brian Jones used to bring in these records to play for them, to kind of influence them and educate them on, on the blues. He was the kind of leader of the band at that time. And he brought a Robert Johnson record uh, there was only 29 songs over two recording periods ever recorded by Robert Johnson. And um, Brian Jones comes and plays this record for Keith and Keith goes, this is amazing. You know, who is it? And he said, Robert Johnson. And he said, but who's the guitar player? He said, Robert Johnson. And he said, who's the other one? And Brian said, no, there isn't. There's not another one. It's one guy. And Keith Richards said that um, he thought he was getting pretty good at blues guitar. And then when he heard that, he realized how good and how sophisticated it could be. And most people here, even to this day, that'd be such a good. That's a great story. That's such a good meme. Like sad Keith Richards, like I don't shred. <laughs> like that's just the best. I, I don't have that, that alternating that. right hand. Yeah, he, he's like I need to be an octopus. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but he wasn't always that good. I mean, Sunhouse, who was who was an older mm -hmm. blues musician mm -hmm. in the area, uh, would best. would play. Um, juke joints and he would kind of sell them out and robert johnson was around and he was only playing on street corners and one time in an intermission of uh willie brown and robert johnson were playing uh i mean willie brown and sunhouse were playing robert johnson went up on the stage during an intermission and took a guitar and started to play and uh sunhouse referred to it as noising in fact he said that wow. so many people were annoyed by his guitar playing that they made sunhouse chase him out and then he disappeared he disappeared for about a year and a half and make a long story short because there are stories about what happened in between. He comes back. He has a guitar strapped to his back and Sunhouse sees him and he says, uh, what are you going to do? You're going to be no making noise again, basically. And he said, no, just give me a chance. And he pulls out a guitar that has seven strings on it. It's a, it's a guitar that has a six string headstock, but it has a seven string. The high Physically string impossible. Seven? Well, there's a lot of rumors about it. Most people think it's a national that has okay. a high string added yeah. to a, added to it. Or but they like basically that. said that he his sound sounded like multiple people playing. Uh, so that talks about mythology and like music. But just uh, since yeah. we're going to dip well, into like the iconic shape yeah. of the guitar, but, one but, more. But tell them like the, cro the Crossroads story. So. Do you want to yeah. know the crossroads story? Yeah. So yeah, the cr really quick because that ties into the it's Paganini. total Rumpel Skull scene, the same idea. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's it's it's, it's the devil went down to Georgia. Right. So mm -hmm. they had basically said that he went to the crossroads. I think it's the U.S. sixty nine and forty one or forty one and sixty nine, and um, the devil uh, took his guitar. There some hellhounds appeared, and he said, you know. Um, I he basically made him a deal to trade his soul for being great at guitar, and the devil similarly to uh, Tartini's dream, tunes his guitar. He tunes his guitar in a special way and gives him gives him this guitar back. Um, and and so, and it's also there in part of the legend, they talked about hellhounds kind of being around and Robert Johnson- Poodles, really, it's poodles, I bet. Poodle hounds, yeah, Josh Reese's yeah. poodle hounds. But they, um, <laughs> they uh, he sings about that. So in, in one way, um, Robert Johnson kind of encouraged this kind of myth by singing songs about deals at the crossroads and talking right. about hellhounds and um, who let the dogs out, who let the dogs out. Another famous, <laughs> yeah. lesser, famous. Known, lesser known by Johnson. So yeah. that talks about the um, guitar Ooh. mythology in music. But just real quick, since we're going to shift over to the symbolism. That's how we guitar. got good, by the way, all of us. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, how I got half good. I, yes. I made a deal with a dude in a devil costume. I gave him my soul. It was a cheap costume, and he didn't uh, get me that good a guitar. My guy was in so, a banana outfit. Yeah. Um, I made a deal with like a squid. I don't know. Who a whole, I made a whole deal furry with. convention. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know what squid. I made a deal with. 
Yeah. Give me, give me some tentacles. Come on, help me out. Here. So Segovia still... told. No, go no, ahead, go. Susie. No, 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 no. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> we were on, we were on tour together. We do this kind of stuff all the time. So it feels I know, natural for I us know. to interact this way. That's um, how we get the drives through. That's how you get through the, yeah, those long drives. It's like yeah. so. Oh, yeah. Segovia told. Um, a, a, a myth, a, a legend or a myth about the shape of the guitar itself, the origin and the shape of the guard, guitar itself. It has to do with Apollo, who is a Greek guard of a god of archery, but also of um, music amongst many things. He's commonly depicted um, in sculptures or in paintings on pottery with a Greek guitar, which is called a kithara. And I love guitar, that it's like archery. Oh, yeah. Okay. He was I the, love he, that it's archery just because the guitar kind yeah. of represents that, which I totally. love. It's fucking I cabinet. love that. You mentioned that the other day, and I was like, that's so cool. I never I never games. thought that. Yeah. I Hunger love it. Games. Yeah. It's totally. You're like, uh, well, let me check my shoe. <laughs> just, uh... <laughs> yeah. So so Apollo had just recently killed a uh, a python with his archery skills at the uh, that was blocking the way to the Delphi Oracle. Yeah, as one does. And he was hanging around Cupid, Eros, who was also an archer, and mocking Cupid, saying, you know, like, you know, I, I can kill these big snakes, but, you, you know, you just use it, you, these puny arrows to be people. Mm -hmm. And he also mocked uh, Cupid's singing skills. So Cupid being, you know, you know, wanting to get some revenge, took a gold arrow and shot it into Apollo's heart making him fall desperately in love with Daphne. And to just make matters worse for Apollo, Cupid took a, um, an arrow made of lead and shot it into Daphne's heart to just make her revulsed by Apollo. And so, so you pick on babies. Yeah. Yeah. Don't pick on babies. And wow. uh, so Daphne, you know, Apollo was madly in love with her following around. Daphne just wanted to get away from him. She went down to her father, who is one of about 3,000 river gods. His name was Peneus. And, Peneus? Uh, seriously? Oh, my yeah. God. Interesting. Saucy. It's not the kind of thing I would just throw in there. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, well, the river Peneus. You're probably familiar with it. And she, and she, she begged him to, uh, to help her. So he turned her into a tree. And Apollo uh, found this out. And... Um, basically use the wood of that tree to make the first guitar. I think it's a Pinocchio. I was thinking no, so he didn't make that's later. And so later. Segovia says that's why the uh, guitar has a, 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 a has a feminine shape. Ah, but that's so just, cool. Just to kind of push back a little bit on that. I think that personally, as I hand this over, I think the guitar is a combination between uh, you know the neck, which is like masculine at attributes, and the 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 body, which has for hundreds of years had feminine attributes. And the way guitars flags, look. Yeah. It's and it's held together yeah. by these strings, right? Mm -hmm. Where we sit on the other side of it, somewhere on the spectrum of this male and this female like a uh, qualities, and we, as uh, creators. Uh, use this tension on the strings to put our Ooh. our vision of creation out into the world. That's sexual tension in A440. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I never thought yeah. I like the tension part. That makes sense. Right. And like original guitar strings or strings were made cat guts. Guts, right? Made That's what guts. condoms were made of too. Yeah. Yeah. That's, okay. Okay. They used to be total pervs, all the musicians back then. Well, I mean, he kind of had to be. Yeah, there's not what much else, else going do? on, right? There's no TV. Yeah. yeah, exactly. What the yeah. hell? Yeah, procreate. <laughs> just like, we're gonna wait for the internet, or we're we gonna do something. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll build the Coliseum. Okay, yeah. exactly. Blood sport. We can do that, I suppose. Okay. <laughs> oh. I don't know. Want to blame people cool. for stuff? Well, thanks. Do you have anything else, Chris? <laughs> That's good. That, that's actually that's kind of cool. Feels... Yeah. Well, okay. You know, I actually. So Warren curious. had some thoughts, right? Well, yeah. it's well. The, the, all, all of that kind of, it's the classic kind of like, um, uh, it's almost the first conspiracy theory on some level, like that kind of shit, like where you go like Jimmy Page, like, oh, you know, he lives in Dracula's castle and I hear he never sleeps, he sleeps in a coffin and his Les Paul's made out of, um, I don't know, uh, friggin' clogs. A tree from the yeah. Garden of Eden or Haunted something. Haunted clogs. Like, he yeah, did something. live in Boliskin House. He did, exactly. He did. You know, he, and 
Mm -hmm. And the whole, um, uh, well, it's funny because it's like the backwards masking thing. It's like, you you just kind of even just hint at Satan. If you're like, oh, for devil's sake, they're like, whoa. All right. It's, it's, there's a lot of paranoia in that, but it's also makes rock interesting because it's, they're like, oh, that's satanic. These are bad people doing bad things. Let's watch it. It's like reality TV. Well, I think it's a way of dismissing (laughs) stuff as well. I mean, the guitar, the guitar is something, it's one of the only instruments that I can think of right now because I'm, because I'm, uh, is, is the one of the only instruments I can think of that we actually hold on our body. Do you know, like, and so the yeah. vibrations that we create are going through our bodies. And I think there was a pushback against this because there's something about it that seems licentious. Mm. What about the bagpipes? Right. Thing? And then rock and roll comes along, which, you know, produces the music for people to get together and dance, which leads to other things. You could be yeah. louder than physically possible previous to that. Like an amplifier, that's a wonderful concept. Right. You're like, you can't hear me? I don't, I can't hear myself. I want everyone to hear myself like that kind of thing. It's just, I love that. That's that. It's And uh, it amplifies something super primitive. That's the thing. Guitars are a primitive instrument. They have not changed in design. I mean, they've added strings. There have been obviously like technical advances, but the kind of neck and the strings and the body has been the same for a while. Interestingly, mm-hmm. uh, doing, doing a little bit of reading for this talk, I found out that tar comes from the, uh, Sanskrit word for strings, tar. So, mm-hmm. you know, all the kind of references it to a guitar. And um, the guitars have been largely been the same, especially in America. I mean, it went from 10 yeah. frets to 12 frets. There were strings added, but it's kind I of have, been the same. It's very primitive. Yeah. yeah. I have a, I have like a 19, I think it was 1930s, sometime late 20s, early 30s, Stella lap steel, which is one of the first pickups they had oh, yeah, for nice, guitars. Yeah which is really interesting in how they were formed and the strings and how they picked it up and everything. And I, I like that. I like what you're talking about. I think that's super cool. Lap steels are very, they're, they're an interesting, I would say almost more diabolical cousin to the guitar. If you're, if you're trained in, you know, fret work, cause that, yeah. that's like, that's like ice skating with, I don't know, in, in like, like, I don't know, swords on your feet or something. It seems nearly impossible. They did that instrument seems so fluid compared to like, Oh, there Color in the lines. Check it out. For, for, okay, for, I'm trying to. Yeah. Like oh, there were cool. just these. Oh, what? Huge wrap around. Yeah, what? wrap that's around. Like a pickups. Kind of thing, yeah. yeah. And it's an old, I think this is from the 30s, old Stella lap steel. Yeah, but this was cool. like essentially the first guitar pickup. Right. It was electric name, guitar um, pickup. Yeah. So Alvino, something that helped develop that, who is the grandfather of. Of uh, the, the brothers in the Arcade Fire, of the what? Grandfather or great grandfather of, of the, Arcade uh, Fire, the band. Yeah, really. Of Win and Will Butler, their grandfather helped develop that that first pickup. I can't. Ah, it's, all about, ah. it's all about who something you know. Interesting. His name's escaping me now, but he's all. Yeah. So we're totally off. That's I know amazing. that was off subject, but those are no, fun facts. But so. yeah, the guitar yeah. has been like almost unchanged in centuries. You know, like you said, little technological updates here and there. It's the axis. Mm-hmm. So it's like the first kind of, it's a, actually technically the second. But right, but it's rock and roll that really changes it, right? Because it's being used in jazz, in these big hollow bodies, and, mm-hmm. and and they had pickups, right? Um, yeah. But it's, it's, I think it's the solid body, and you have that innovation It was at the dumb, same yeah. time as rock and roll is developing, right? So right about yeah. that time. Jazz guitar pickups are were largely aftermarket. Mm-hmm. So kind of solid body production oh. g- guitar with a pickup coming in as a new thing. And part of that was the battle. Like it also contributed to the development of guitar because the, the, the jazz guitar for a long time was largely a percussive instrument because with that mm-hmm. down kind of picking with the playing yeah. was the only way that that could project yeah. through. It wasn't a soloist instrument for a long time. Yeah. And so what happened, um, the there's a lot of stuff that, that yeah. There's stuff that happened in between, but the, the 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 ability for people just playing very simplistic, primitive music to be amplified in a loud way just mm-hmm. really changed what was going on. That was yeah, well said. Told, yeah. Let's dumb it down for the dummies, and we can hit some rock and roll. That's that's what it, and that's that's a big moment though, because that's in a way like going, this is not an exclusive club. If you if you're weird enough or whatever, you're uh, bold enough, join the club. Get yeah. one. Yeah, or it's about a vibe. A club. It's about the yeah. vibrations. It's about a vibe. 
And it's interesting about like the the acoustic or the you know first actual um what are they called electric. pickups yeah electric or pickups that's where it kind of splits with um you know acoustic guitar or electric guitar the symbolism between the two and mm -hmm. if you see an acoustic guitar like emoji you kind of think country music or singer songwriter whereas you if you see an electric guitar that like strat you think like rock and roll which yeah. also can get very yeah. nuanced, you know, that can get nuanced on itself, like rock and roll as an I'm playing rock music or electric music, or it can go into the world of what does rock and roll mean for you? Rock and roll to me is like my dad has my, or my brother has two boys and they're hog wild. I'm like, oh, he's so punk rock. I, right. can't, I couldn't even do that. It's a healthy That's rock and roll to me. Exactly. It's the same with punk rock. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's a little worse where they're like, uh, let's yeah. take the dog or something, but it is, mm -hmm. it's that primitive it's attitude. It's yeah. what, and probably the same way, like what hunting was. Yeah. Attitude. Yeah. Yeah. And just like, you don't, you do it. You, you get your mm -hmm. hands through, it's trial by fire. Uh, and, and loudness matters. Yeah. If you're going to mm -hmm. win the shouting contest, you got to be the loudest, obviously. Yeah. I think another interesting aspect of the guitar visually is that most of us, um, saw a guitar before we had one and we associated oh, yeah. with a musician mm -hmm. so like it's kind of a this superficial relationship like when i saw jimmy page with a les paul i always wanted a les paul to me that's mm -hmm. what symbolized rock and roll mm -hmm. that was everything to me and uh when i i uh i bought a, when i first bought a les paul when i when i was uh 17 or 18 I got the guitar and I couldn't believe how small it was. I was like, this is smaller than Jimmy Page's. But I realized that I was bigger than him. So mm -hmm. it just looked like it small changes on your me. your viewpoint. Yeah. He's totally. 11. Yeah, he's, and he's... we associate these brands and these shapes with like um, with quality and who we mm -hmm. kind of want to be, who we want to project ourselves into the world as being. As, as guitar wrong. players, we spend right. so much time alone. Mm -hmm. so much time alone practicing rightfully so yeah, yeah. that we uh yeah i can see why yeah. we're original know. social distancing <laughs> <laughs> i used to have one of those old dan electro uh lipstick case pickups oh, yeah those, those remember are those silver yeah i loved it i had yeah. a double double lipstick cake pick pickup and i was like i'm gonna play like Jimi hendrix like, on his guitar picked it, it up awful. and was like still don't know how to play guitar I'm 15 or whatever, but it, it's interesting that I, I had that, I had that right. idea. So, I mean, that's what I want to bring up really quick is that's so the magic wand. What guitar you pick mm -hmm. says a lot about you and is definitely yeah. symbolic. So you say like the emojis, like, yeah, acoustic is kind of like folk or country electric mm -hmm. is rock. But even within that, you've got flying V like, well, that's, that's usually metal. It's metal. not a stationary V. Yeah. It's not, a, got, it's like, not a crawling. Uh, v. Yeah. Right. A Schechter or something, probably like <laughs> new metal or something. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. What, yeah. yeah Rock, Rockabilly is going to be playing Rich? A, a Gretsch. BC Rich, mm -hmm. that's metal. Uh -huh. right? So you've got yep. these things the where Warlock. these symbols, these icons get of the shapes of the guitar. Or genres. Pig pigeonhole you, right? Yeah. 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 They're, they're um, kind of like bell bottoms. I would say, the... except maybe the Strat and the Les Paul. Agreed. Yeah. Because these that's seem to be potatoes. used yeah. on every they're, genre. Yeah. They and cross can, genres. The right. staples. So, but the yeah. interesting thing about the Flying V, the Flying V, the Explorer, and uh, the Futura, which never came out until the '80s, were all designed in 1959. So yeah. they were they were something That's that so came weird. out before really people didn't get it. They were yeah. very Marketing, futuristic. Yeah. They were so futuristic that people didn't get them until the '80s, and then in the '80s, it just becomes this symbolism for something. So it's an interesting. It's an interesting hmm. thought, like um, the Stratocaster was going to be discontinued until Jimi Hendrix started playing it. And then all of a sudden, an era. people wanted to play the Stratocaster. Yeah. So I think it is yeah. by association, you know, as guitar players, we come to learn that, like, also they have this sound, right? Like, if you're mm -hmm. going to play, like, Hendrix, Stevie Ray, Vaughn kind of stuff, you know, like, that's a Strat. Like, you need it to do it. If you're going to play, mm -hmm. like, um, yeah. Zeppelin or ACDC or something like that. That's more like kind of a Gibson thing. So we learn 
the sound that is associated with with it. But I do yeah. think largely our interest in my interest, at least I'll speak for myself in guitar, was superficial. I wanted to look like that. What's well, like Marvel I wanted to see those are rivals almost like it's like pick it to, you know, are you a shark or a jet? You know, who are yeah, the rivals? Interesting. Uh, DC and Marvel or just like anything that where you get the two, like, what are you? Uh, uh, I don't know. Right. Raiders. Fender or Gibson. Fucking yeah. Raiders or that... 49ers fan. Or yeah. Or, or horse racing or triage or something. Yeah, I, exactly. I think that Fender and Gibson players are different. I think that, you yeah. know, what's interesting. Yes. I, oh, most totally. of the Fender players that I know are tinkerers. Mm -hmm. Everybody that I know that's way into Fender like, guitars, like I I got this thing, but I put on the bridge, and I yeah, it's, it's like it's, the Strokes with, versus like Ozzy. It's so you're gonna yeah. like connect you know, or Black or, Sabbath. Or, I'm, Ozzy's Operation. better, right? Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> so um, and I think that's an interesting thing. Whereas Gibson, because Gibson is a solid body guitar, yeah, people want people kind of uh, fetishize a, a guitar that's all original. And kind of complete the way it was where most they people that i know it, yeah. are fender players are like i'm wondering about getting this bridge or maybe i can change the, the shape of my tremolo arm or mm -hmm. i change these pickups I, I find fender people to be more tinkerers which is interesting because les paul kind of was the ultimate tinkerer he mm. was a scientist he went against brand yeah yeah well he just perfected well, it i think he, yeah. i play a, i play a fender Florent or a, sorry a gibson florentine which is a which? Les Paul body with the F holes in it. So it's yeah. lighter. F -holes. Yeah. And fancier. That yeah. Fancy. Fancy. Yes. That's not an F hole. That's a, like a snake hole or something. Yeah. I have two of them. <laughs> I don't have a lowercase F hole. I don't give an F hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I played that. I literally got into that. I wanted the the Gibson sound that like balls and the, that heaviness, but I kept breaking my ribs with the heavier ones with a custom. So I went to this one, which is they did like a limited run and it's so awesome, but it's an entirely different guitar. It's like a little bit of, it's like a 335 meets a Les Paul, but oh, it's wow. more of like a Fender meets a Les Paul. Totally different sound that I had to get used to. What the, those heavier, the, the arch top Les Pauls, I and mean, those are, they get pretty effing heavy, some of those too. And Explorer, oh, yeah. that's, just, that's just furniture. That's like, a, well, we could make a coffee table. <laughs> it is furniture, and, yeah. Uh, Especially when could... you're 5'3 and have a pea sized head. <laughs> that's like... what that's what I do. That's <laughs> fire. Thing. There we go. <laughs> All right, that's so weird. But, um, yeah. We had talked earlier, I don't, I don't want to get too far past it, like um, the way the guitar is like a placeholder for other. It's a surrogate ideas or for other mm, mm -hmm. um, things. So like, um, I know Chris, we talked about this, like it's all, it, it can be like uh, a sword, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's like Excalibur or a and reaching even, stick. It, not only is it, you know, the weapon of the night or whatever, but mm -hmm. it's a fireplace poker. It's uh, even like, like the movie Wayne's world. It's Excalibur is the strap. It's the, you know, object of desire. It's it picked this, me. Right. It picks yeah. you. Yeah. Just like Harry Potter's wand, and there is yeah. a there is a balance Hi. though to look at it both from the the feminine, the masculine, the yin and yang, yeah. the kind of earth qualities and the sky qualities. Like a sword, typically in dreams, you know, slices through into your like dreams, and uh, you know, mm -hmm. is kind of aggressive. And the kind of body of the guitar is kind of like more grounded and like towards your body. And so mm -hmm. I think these uh, symbolically, but. I, I'm not sure that that's the reason why people are drawn to it. You know, it's interesting. My girlfriend was saying that, yeah, and you and Gavin, like, go back to back and, like, cross guitars a lot. And I was like, okay, you know, like, you, you know, there's, like, this kind of, like, physical symbolism. Like, sure, in a toilet. Yeah. <laughs> but, there's, but, yeah, then there's also language symbolism around it. Because, you know, you call the guitar an axe. Yeah. And, right. Yeah. And what does an axe do? It can be, like, a weapon of war or it can be, like, a murder weapon, like an axe murderer. Or it mm -hmm. can be like, you know, you're wood shedding out in the chopping wood in the, you know, practicing, right? Uh, yeah. So Similarly, like what does rock and roll symbolize? What does the guitar symbolize? Air damage and... Um, well, right. Someone <laughs> who's like uh, good at the guitar, they'd call them a ripper, a shredder. Shredder. Yeah. Who's like With yeah, the axe, a yeah. pyrotechnic. Destroyer. Yeah. Gunslinger. Yeah. Right. Face yeah. melter, right. yeah, yeah, so the, yeah, lighting California yeah. on fire, yeah, just Ex you know, exactly. They call it uh, 
I have the COVID nineteen. <laughs> Amazing. When there's going to be one, of course, there's going to be eventually. There's going to be a, a COVID nineteen guitar. guitar. Guitars are going selling more than ever. Like the COVID. You know, they're going to be like, oh yeah. Well, let's um, kind of. Uh, well, it is. It. It's interesting that guitar sales are up now, right? I have a friend That's of mine great. that works for a major guitar company, and he, he there there's like uh, people are at home, and they're kind of. Re learning to re-express themselves with the instrument. I think there's yeah. like a renaissance of the in and, with the instrument. Which is great interesting. Way to not talk to your family too. Totally. Yeah. Or just speak in like, what do you want for dinner tonight? <laughs> You're all like that kind of stuff. Oh, well, I want to try that for a month. This song's called. Uh, that means like spaghettios. Susie, you have a question up here. You want to answer it? Do you see it? No. Susie, Susie, Susie. Well. Uh, I Somebody only see Phil. Oh. Brian Cassidy. Two questions. Obviously, I think a lot of people would like to know the status of Dead Sarah's new album, but I would like to know the status of Sujitsu. <laughs> okay, so um, Dead Sarah, we are working on our third album. Number three. Um, um, Sujitsu is kind of just Susie like jujitsu, sujitsu. It's a play on, it's like my solo stuff, but not even, it's just like noodles I make. It's not really anything yet. Um, so I have no status of sujitsu. I Chris, like that. You and I might work on sujitsu, some some stuff. Oh yeah, that's sujitsu. I'm down with Little that. Does, does the title have up? an exclamation point in it? Because that's a really good um, thing. Now it does. Yeah. What about sudoku? Now it does. Sudoku? Yeah. Sudoku. Can I be in that yeah. one? Yep, we're, we're making it. We'll, we'll, My dad's really good at yeah, it. Yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, but yeah, Dead Sarah, we, uh, we, we, I think we have a, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but uh, I think we're releasing a song in November. We're going to mute that part. What, yeah, what in case I'm after. not, in case my managers are like, I don't know. Into the wild. That I think maybe. Um, so, but yeah. What do you guys think to you growing up was to each of you what the most iconic guitar was when you when you were a kid and you first started getting into it? What was the guitar that you absolutely I'm, wanted? I'm a friggin' walking cliche, honestly. I'm the stupidest, like dumb, like you would think I don't have an imagination. Like, uh, first guitar song I ever heard was Sir to Heaven. And, uh, and then I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I guess I'll play guitar. And that okay. was it. I was and six. what guitar was that? You wanted the double neck guitar then? Well, yeah. for MTV, or I think I, I don't think my eyes were open. I was still a kitten, but I, I was like six years old, and the neighbor played it. And I go, okay, this seems important. I go, I, the, the little flute thing. That's, the, but obviously it's about the guitar when you get through it. And so that that song, that dumb song that you hear, you never want to hear again, probably, because uh, it's just, you know, it reminds you of people playing it wrong. Uh, is that was it? And I go, okay, well, Jimmy Page is officially my. Um, not Godfather, I guess Devil Father, whatever it would be, whatever the opposite of a Godfather is. <laughs> so, which guitar did that make you want to have, or did you not care about which uh, guitar you had? One with strings was definitely it, it, one my, with strings. My tennis racket was not doing it, and the air guitar is, it's, you know, they're like um, rice cakes. Yeah. They're just nothing. Yeah. Interesting. And Ian, so what I, about I, you? I, I was similar. I wanted a Les Paul. I heard Zeppelin as yeah. well, like uh, Over the Hills and Far Away. Oh yeah, you know, my dad would had that record and would play it, and then when the the full band came in, okay. I was like, "Whoa, I want to do mm -hmm. that." Over hills and far away is actually kind of yeah. that's more of it. Just grab you right out, you know, yeah. the throat. That one, like when it kicks in, you're like, uh, you just have no idea it's going that. that way at the beginning. Like, oh, this is kind of a yeah. hey. fun acoustic song. Oh my gosh, yo, wait, <laughs> da 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 da. You're right, and you're what? In. Yeah, I love. What it. about you, Chris? Les Paul. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just um, Jimmy Page all the way for me. Oh, like yeah. such a huge oh, yeah. influence in, in my life. Yeah. Interesting thing about Stairway to Heaven was one of the things uh, Jimmy Page had said is that he wanted the song to constantly be ramping up in tempo and That's just getting yeah. more extreme, which kind of wouldn't happen in today's day and age because most people record into a click. It's one of the kind of aspects of musical magic I think that we are missing. Absolutely. Well said. There's a couple live verses of Baby Shark that get pretty out there in the, in the last verse. So it's it's definitely <laughs> Grandpa Shark or. But no, hold on end. really quick. So you say magic and you like you have musicians as magicians. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. uh -huh. So the, the guitar is a magic wand kind of thing. Yeah. Or like, and a click track's a grid. Or like a the grid. magician's staff. 
right? It's it's like your implement of power that, that yeah. makes the that makes yeah. the magic. The authority yeah. of it's power. Your cane. Right? You poke the cane in the chest when you say, "I want a goose for Christmas" or whatever. <laughs> and uh, it's also like a shield. I was telling yeah. Warren. Um, it is. The first time I was introduced to him, I saw him play live. He's a killer guitar player. And I was telling him that um, at the end of shows, if I take my guitar off and I'm like, you know, saying goodnight, I feel naked. I don't like mm -hmm. the way it feels to not have the guitar. So in a way, the guitar is also like a shield. And it's like Daisy Dukes. <laughs> Sorry, it's like clothes. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, they're, you know, a little little bit more modest than Dave, Daisy Dukes. Well, maybe, like a beekeeper but... outfit. Yeah, no, it's like, it's, it's your, it, that's, it makes sense. It's the... And that's so it, w I think that we tend to be better at, maybe illustrated by some of this talk, better at playing the instrument than talking because it's our voice and it's our shield. Absolutely, right? yeah. It's, and... it's like dancing about architecture. Well, <laughs> you're just communicating through a different avenue. Right. right. It's just another... It's like, it's like, it, and you know, a guitar is like a tool, right? So, um, it's like the highway to hell and kill it. Construction workers have hammers and yes, mm -hmm. and whatnot. Get musicians, the guitars have the guitar, it's a tool. Birthday boys yeah. have noisemakers. And how cool is it that we literally get paid to play with a toy? That's what I always think about. I get really excited anytime I'm bummed. I'm like, you know, I've been paid to literally play with this wood toy that I love. It's the greatest thing. It's the greatest thing. It's so cool. Yeah. And the, the guitar out, is a tool. Yeah, it the, is a tool. The guitar it's a tool is straight for up communication. a tool. Yeah. I have yeah. a guy that's a kind it's of a mentor to me. It's closed yes. Yeah. A guy that was a mentor to me, he's a session player in New York, and he said a tool is a guitar is just a hammer. He's like, and yeah, you don't need a, you don't need a fancy hammer to build a good house. When you have yeah. this guitar, yeah. everything looks like a song. Yeah. Architects communicate yeah. what they want with buildings. We communicate what we want with this tool. Yeah. Our Hopefully. Tool communicate. You do. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, you, build, you build songs. Right? It's a ghost. Yeah. Thing too. It's a flamethrower also. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For when when I start when Emily it's and I fine. first started uh, our band, uh, I wanted a Les Paul. We loved Led Zeppelin. We also loved like you know Fleetwood Mac and all these other bands. But um, I couldn't afford a Les Paul, and I had Not a cheap. Takamini Takamini uh, acoustic guitar, and I'd plug it into an amp and distort it, and then my let's just say this hand was super strong, like playing like rock and roll on an acoustic guitar through an amp was so hard, but it was, I, that was so like cool, my though. avenue. I was like, I have to get that sound with what I can afford, what I got. Doc Watson was passed That's up. The, um, when they were doing the folkways recordings, they were going around trying to find, uh, you know, country and blues and bluegrass players. And mm -hmm. they went into the town where Doc Watson lived and, they said, do you know anybody that's good at playing this kind of music? And they said, yeah, old Doc Watson. And Doc Watson had a repair shop and couldn't afford an acoustic guitar. And at the time, he only had mm. Les Paul. He had an electric guitar, which is <laughs> the opposite of you. That's opposite. And they bypassed yeah, cool. him because they were only interested in um, recording acoustic music. So it's wow. an interesting thing that somebody that was such an important figure kind of got bypassed for quite some time yeah. because he didn't have he didn't have an acoustic guitar he had an electric guitar so that's yeah. another thing that we you know we so kind of realize when we it. get into it mm -hmm. it's like you you make with what you have and yeah. i think a lot of times as a guitar player i think oh if only i had this or i could do this and i would make these sounds but really like we mm -hmm. do better with parameters we're more creative yeah. with the parameters yes. and the kind of construction of the instrument yeah. and the parameters yeah. that's why blues music i think is is, like is so game. popular because mm -hmm. it's you have yep. to express yourself. Yeah. So there's only five notes, you know, yeah. five, six, you know, whatever. That's mm -hmm. a technical argument. But um, because of the parameters, it forces you to express yourself as an individual in and order that, to not sound like yeah. other people. It's it's the workaround. It's language. It's, yeah. it's different it's an languages. Course. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think like, octopus is great. I mean, is that 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 might be even a good way to end? Like guitar yeah. is an octopus. It is. Yeah, I think that's great. It's like a piano um, fell on top of itself in a sandwich store. <laughs> <laughs> but really quick, really quick, too, um, as time came has gone on, and now in the present moment we're in, the guitar as a symbol has kind of changed a little, I think, away from being seen as like, oh, yes, a, a revered, revered musical instrument. 
mm -hmm. to now being almost just like a symbol of like party, good times. Yeah, it's an, an emotion. Fun. Yeah. So you have like it's like a birthday greeting hat. cards or or ads or something, mm -hmm. and there's, there's a guitar here and there. It doesn't really. Yeah, like this is it's also the world. E equivalents. The, uh, right. Equivalents. <laughs> it's the same thing as this. Is you're like, oh, rock and roll, rock and roll. As in an emoji, it's the same thing, which communicates whatever they have in their head. It's a sonic it's, confetti it, cannon. It's entirely different than actually meaning musicianship or an instrument or a tool to communicate with the, right, aesthetic, with the aesthetic clock. It's right. a lampshade on the head. It, honestly, it's kind of jackassery on some level where you're like, yeah, a rat. Right. You know, it's, it's, so it's, it's been like the yeah. kind of inane qualities have been brought to the fore. Uh, as far as like, you know, being called a rock, you're a rock star of something. Like there's no big what? rock stars as much anymore. So you've got like, John's a rock star of sales or accounting. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's like me. It's like me being like swoosh, hole in one, or any sports term. Yes, yes. You yeah. know, I it's the same sports. thing yeah, as like course. rock and roll. I love sports, but I'm not cut out for sports. Like I can't the, be like, don't do it. I think the irony <laughs> of that is the irony but of that is it started out the as same dangerous. Thing. Right, right. Susie, sorry yeah. to cut you off. Yeah, no, 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 I it agree. It yeah. started out as like dangerous. So when we, we were beginning the talk, we were talking about people's like um, this kind of instruments, these vibrating strings, the guitar itself is dangerous, has some connection to dark forces. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, it's you know, on a greeting card. So it's yeah. in a way, some of it has lost its danger. And then we're, we're kind of more uh, comfortable with that, you know, as mm -hmm. it becomes more popularized, we're more comfortable with the kind of figure. It maybe doesn't mean the same, but that's yeah. okay because language tends to change, you know, yeah, like absolutely. the English language changes. People say bad isn't good and things mm -hmm. become the reverse. So yeah. Sick isn't awesome. Yeah. Well, and yeah. I think that, I think the, the, where the bar is for what's actually surprising or shocking is constantly fucking moving too. You know, right. Mm -hmm. You're like, Oh my God, the first time I saw it, Schnooky, I was like, oh my god, TV's never gonna be the same, or whatever. Mm -hmm. these, these Who, kind of who's Schnooky? <laughs> Jersey Shore, kind of just like, ah, oh, no, like you know, my, my dream girl, reality no. TV, uh, Jersey Shore. She's kind uh, of the or first, like Honey Boo Boo, or, or whatever. Yeah, right? exactly. It's mm -hmm. basically where you got not... the first spectacle humans that, um, in, in ironically called reality shows, ruined reality. But so, so mm -hmm. like, where we just have like three minutes left. So where would so, you Snooki. think like guitar as a symbol in the future could be going? Uh, side guitars, obviously. Just get rid of the strings. Well, it's virtual guitars, maybe keyboards. Oculus. That's like that'd be like retro future because they've already already had guitars. I think you yeah. wear it like a onesie, but it's like a digital onesie that you wear on the um, like a cyber virtual <laughs> virtual guitars. I don't Perhaps, know. but I mean, just like how the guitar will be looked at, you know. The yeah, thing about I, the guitar is cool is yeah. that it's it's small, it's compact. You can mm -hmm. travel with it. I mm -hmm. always travel with my acoustic guitar, so I think it's it's going to have a, you know it'll constantly have an attachment to us and and be mm -hmm. growing with us because it's something that you can move around. And even if we you know everything goes to hell in a handbasket, you can still have your acoustic guitar in the backyard, and we can sit around and kind of do our dream band, the four of us, you know, yeah. with acoustic guitars. So I I, like I think it. it has I think there's no limit to the guitar. And I think yeah, its definition in our society will change. And it's, I believe it's having a renaissance. I feel it, you know, as before people are like, oh, people don't want guitar music, it's, but I, I think it's going to have a renaissance. It's yeah, become like, like multilingual. Yeah. Well, th it's that's like everyone the thing. can communicate their language through it. Absolutely. It's like scribbling yeah. or it's like a Rochart test or whatever. Like it's like, yeah. You know, what is, what is your part of your brain that you don't understand? Say to uh, my part of your brain that I can't talk to. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's a fucking oh, uh, yeah. a tra translator. Yeah. Trans mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's a good it's an translator. Right. Yeah. Translator, translates translator. your emotions, your feelings. Yeah. Yep. Anyone, oh. anyone in the world. This is yep. my aunt antenna talking to your aunt antennas. Yep. Exactly. That's what I think. It's a bilingual machine. It's 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 infinilingual. Infinilingual. It's good. It's a I think we're impressing macaroni. a lot of people. Uh, on that macaroni. note, I, I I just want to. I think that's it. I think we're good. I think infinilingual is where we should wrap it up. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've, yeah. We've come where <laughs> to go. We've come full circle. <laughs> yeah. So thank you everyone for joining us. Yes. And thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us.
yeah, all the disappoint your parents here, and uh, <laughs> hopefully some of this was coherent to someone. <laughs> and, or not. Um, Enjoy the. It was rest still better than the debate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. no, <laughs> and it was dangerous. It was more dangerous too. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Many people died. Many dreams were killed. So everyone have a good <laughs> rest of uh, Guitar.com live today. We'll see you later. There Thank we go. You. Oh, yeah, that was great. Bye -bye. We'll be playing for. Yeah. Thank y'all. Love y'all.